Welcome back to chemistry class. Today we're identifying types of chemical reactions. In this reaction, called a single replacement reaction, we're going to use copper chloride and zinc metal. And as we combine the two, we'll notice that the copper and the zinc, the two cations, will trade places with each other in this reaction to form two new products. As one of the reactants, zinc metal is a solid at room temperature. It's a very dull, gray, non-lustrous metal. And we'll see as we combine these two, you'll see almost instantly a black substance that is formed. And that is the copper metal. One way to look at this type of reaction is imagine uh, we have some people dancing on the dance floor. So we have Pete and Sarah are initially dancing with each other. Pete would be the copper, Sarah is the chlorine, Billy is the zinc by himself. After the reaction, however, the two cations, Billy and Pete, have switched places with each other. And now Billy is dancing with Sarah in the new compound zinc chloride. And Pete, which is the copper, the black substance that was formed in the products is standing by himself. We could also use this analogy when we talk about double replacement reactions. We'll see you next time. We're back here in chemistry class doing another single replacement reaction. Again, we'll be using zinc metal, this time with hydrochloric acid. Uh, in the pneumatic trough, uh, we've already got a soap bath already made uh, with some soap and a little bit of food coloring maybe so you could see the bubbles a little bit better and what we're going to do here is add our zinc metal to our hydrochloric acid and immediately begin to see the production of hydrogen gas as the zinc and hydrogen trade places in this reaction forming two new products zinc chloride and the hydrogen gas Let's test for the hydrogen gas. Wow. Okay, we're back here in chemistry class identifying different types of chemical reactions. In this chemical reaction called a double replacement reaction, we're going to use two different ionic compounds and as they combine the cations are going to disassociate from their respective anions and then reconnect with the other anion to form two new ionic compounds one of them will be soluble in water one will be insoluble in water and will form a solid precipitate in this reaction we're going to use lead nitrate and potassium iodide as our two reactants So you can see initially we started out with two uh, clear solutions, uh, aqueous solutions, and as they combined we created two new products. One, uh, potassium nitrate is an aqueous solution. The other is lead iodide, which is a solid uh, bright yellow precipitate. And if we let this settle for a while, we'll uh, notice that it begins to settle to the bottom. Uh, so one analogy we could use here is uh, two couples dancing on the dance floor as we've got diagrammed on the board George and Sarah George represented by the lead Sarah is the nitrate and in the other ionic compound Pete is the potassium Cindy is the iodine and as this reaction takes place you can see that the two cations disassociate from each other uh, or from their respective anion and switch dance partners uh, to create two new ionic compounds 
So this is an easy way to remember uh, how these uh, cations and anions switch places to form two new ionic compounds. Thanks for joining us here in chemistry and we'll see you next time. We're back here in chemistry class. Now we are demonstrating what's called a combustion reaction. During a combustion reaction, a chemical will burn in the presence of oxygen, producing the common products of water, water vapor, and carbon dioxide gas. So here we've got our uh, soap bath in our pneumatic trough, and we've got our gas line hooked up to some methane gas. So we're going to go ahead and uh, collect some methane bubbles. Okay, here we are going to demonstrate what's called an oxidation reduction reaction. During this process, we say that one substance is oxidized or it loses electrons, and we say the other one is reduced or it gains electrons. So during this oxidation reduction reaction, electrons are transferred from one substance to another. To demonstrate this, Zachary is going to use magnesium metal, which is a very soft, uh, relatively reactive metal and we're going to uh, burn it in our burner and it's going to uh, react with the oxygen in the air to produce what's called magnesium oxide uh, after the transfer of electrons occurs. So you can see the product that's left is a white powdery substance called magnesium oxide and that was after the oxidation reduction reaction took place. We're here in chemistry class identifying types of chemical reactions. This is a decomposition reaction in which ammonium dichromate will be broken down into some of its simpler components uh, nitrogen gas, water vapor, and that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Composition reaction, and we're going to use ammonium dichromate, and we are going to break it down into some of its simpler components, such as nitrogen gas, water vapor, and chromium-3 oxide. Uh, to do that, we're going to use some magnesium metal to get this kick started, and uh, once we do, you'll be able to identify uh, these products here. You see the ammonium dichromate started out as a very bright orange uh, crystalline particles and now as this decomposition reaction is taking place the gas is being given off indicates a chemical change as well as the new product chromium 3 oxide and almost looks like a miniature volcano and there's the magnesium We're back with another demonstration of a decomposition reaction. Here we're going to use hydrogen peroxide. It's 30% solution, so it's quite a bit more uh, concentrated than the solution you'd find in your bathroom cabinet. And what hydrogen peroxide is made of is exactly like water except with one extra oxygen atom. So its chemical formula is H2O2. And what we're going to do is we're going to break that hydrogen peroxide down into water vapor and oxygen gas. So Zachary's going to pour in about 50 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide.
And to mix in this hydrogen peroxide, we're gonna put in a little bit of soap and a little bit of food coloring. And this is just going to add a little bit of drama to the effect. The soap and the food coloring have no bearing at all on the chemical reaction itself. So just give it a little bit of color and allow us to identify uh, the oxygen gas a little bit easier. Now normally hydrogen peroxide is an unstable compound which means it'll over time break down by itself naturally. But it's such a slow process that we don't visibly recognize this. So we're going to speed this process up by using what's called a catalyst. In this case the catalyst is going to be potassium iodide and so it's listed in the chemical reaction over the yield sign as Ki. So that's just going to indicate that the catalyst in this particular reaction is potassium iodide. Our bodies naturally have uh, enzymes in our digestive tract that help speed up or catalyze the processes in the digestion of food. So this catalyst will work in a similar fashion. So We're going to go ahead and add that potassium iodide. And break down our hydrogen peroxide and you can see uh, the water vapor that's being given off looks like steam. And Zachary, go ahead and put your hand over that. You'll feel that it's, what's it feel like? Hot. Pretty warm. So it's also an exothermic reaction giving off heat as this decomposition occurs. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in chemistry class. Hope this helped you out on being able to identify different types of chemical reactions.